I'm Brian with HVAC School and today we're going to do a demonstration of the NRDD recovery machine. How well it works, it's extremely fast, it has a very large uh, condenser coil in it which helps solve a lot of the trouble that we run into with recovery machines. But easiest thing to do is give you a demonstration and show it used in the field. So here we go. Alright, so we are uh, here today looking at the NAVAC NRDD recovery machine. Comes with a lot of nice things, a little extra adapter hose to go with the little quarter inch flare dryer. It also has the connecting cord that connects if you have a recovery tank with a sensor in it. So once it fills to 80% full, it'll shut off, which is nice. That attaches right here. I know a lot of you don't have those in the field. In fact, the one I'm gonna use today doesn't have that, but if you have one like that, that's great. We've got some spare screens, which is important to keep clean. It's a digital display device. It's got self-purge. Um, you can put it in liquid phase when you're originally recovering a liquid to help keep from uh, overloading the compressor. It's got a nice DC compressor. Really good device. We're gonna show how fast it works on this system here. We're gonna be recovering the charge out of it. This is actually a system that I've had some uh, issues with and we are gonna need to replace an expansion valve on it at some point, but I wanna see whether or not the charge that's weighed into it is the right amount of charge or not. And this is going to allow us to do that uh, nice and easily. It's a scroll compressor, so pumping it down isn't the best bet. So we're going to use this and pump it into our tank and go from there. Way in and way out is huge on these. You can see this factory charge is 5.6 pounds. And uh, the line set is short on it, so we should really have a factory charge in this thing. Always shut off the disconnect and test for safety. All right, so let's review what we need for a proper recovery. Obviously, we've got our recovery machine, NAVAC NRDD. We've got our hoses. In this case, I'm not gonna be using a manifold because I've been into using probes primarily lately, but it's a good idea to pull your cores when you're recovering and when you're pulling a vacuum, which you're gonna need to do after your recovery anyway, or whatever work you're doing on the system. So using core remover tools earlier in the process is a great way of doing it. Plus, you've got an extra side port where you can attach your gauges or probes. And now once I pull the core, I've got free flow right through here. So I'm gonna pull the core and then I'm gonna remove this back part here. And that's where I'm gonna connect my hoses that are then gonna go back to the inlet on the recovery machine and then out to my tank. Now there's a lot of talk about, you know, which port on the tank you wanna to connect to. Keep in mind that probably the best way, and this is you know what a lot of people have talked about, is connecting it to the vapor side and then inverting the tank because there's a liquid dip tube inside of this tank that can act as a restriction, but it is better to add your refrigerant into the liquid side. So putting it on the vapor side and flipping the tank is probably the fastest way for general situations where you're not recovering a lot. It's probably not gonna make a huge difference. Obviously, if you're recovering a lot of refrigerant, you need to think about how big your tank is. This is only a five pound system, so when we've got a brand new tank, so that's not gonna be an issue, but that's something you wanna consider. Obviously, if your tank isn't under vacuum, you need to pull a good vacuum on it beforehand down to below 500 microns. You gotta have a scale. I'm gonna use the NAVAC wireless scale. And then in this case, I'm gonna use a T that I'm gonna connect to the inlet port so both of my hoses can then go into this T. And I've got no straighters in the T. It's just gonna be open full flow into the system and I'll do my turning on and turning off at the core tools. So I can use the core tools kind of as my on off ball valve. But then I'm gonna connect my probes to these side ports here in order to get you know access. Now, the digital display, you don't really need to use gauges because you can actually see where you stand just here on the digital display. Another thing that's gonna be worth noting is that in most cases in air conditioning applications, you only have to pull down to atmospheric pressure. Um, that does vary depending on the type of refrigerant and uh, you're gonna to wanna to refer to whatever the codes are in your country and in the US it's the 608 EPA requirements you're going to look look at, look at the recovery requirements or actually they call them the evacuation requirements sort of a funny term there um, that the EPA uses, but you have to look at what level you have to bring it down to. This system is gonna automatically, the NRDD is gonna bring it down very low um, to comply with all of the requirements. I just know that in most cases for comfort cooling in residential like commercial applications, we only need to bring it down to zero PSI, which is where I'm gonna stop today. Let's go ahead and get started with this. All right, so this tank needs to have a vacuum pulled on it because it's a fresh tank. So we got our NAVAC digital vacuum pump and we're gonna pull her down. Pulling down on the hose right now, that came down really quick. All right, open up the tank. Pardon, I thought it would be. 
they need to, maybe I need to start working out. All right, so while I'm letting this pull down, we're gonna go ahead and set up the hoses and the recovery machine. You can see we're reading a lot lower at the pump than we are on the tank, because with the tank, you have the pressure drop all the way through the dip tube, because we're connected to the liquid side here. And there's this dip tube that goes all the way down into the tank, which is why we have that differential between what we're seeing here and what we're seeing here at the pump. But we'll leave that on there for a little bit. We'll pull it out nice and deep, and then uh, we'll be ready to use it. So on this dryer, you don't want to open this up to the atmosphere unless you're unless you're using it to kind of prevent it from being contaminated. Now this one, so small, it may not have any desiccant in it but you can really use any quarter inch flare dryer for this purpose and i would actually suggest as you go on maybe get a larger one kind of a typical size with quarter inch flares on it and that way you'll get a little bit more flow through it another thing is is when you actually charge out of your recovery tank it's a good idea to charge through a filter dryer not that it makes a huge difference but there can be sludge in the bottom of a lot of tanks um, some companies don't clean them out as well as they should and you know you, don't, you never know what those tanks have been through what kind of sludge has been pulled into them so it's a good idea to charge through a filter dryer um, and keep a couple of these quarter inch flare dryers on your truck as they become contaminated as you start to see a pressure temperature drop across them then just replace them and get a new one that's the core pull that with the core really cool And I just leave the core on the core remover and just kind of set it like this on top of the condenser so that way it doesn't get lost. Direction of flow is this direction. So we want to point that in. Point it in and then in. And now we just need a hose going out to the tank. Cores are removed. I have the these just connected on the ports, which really is unnecessary just in case I wanted to see the pressure. Once we get all done, we gotta pull the vacuum on it. So that's really what we need those ports for is for our micron gauges, gauge or gauges. But as you can see, we got a nice deep vacuum now. So we're ready to use this tank to get the job done. And you'll notice it does start to creep up just a little bit. We're at 127 now, but it's a nice, nice and dry. So now it goes out to the tank connect it to the low side, flip it upside down, which again, it's a source of a lot of questions. Why is that best? I mean, it's best by a very small margin. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it closed for now until I purge it and then I'm gonna flip it, put it on top of this. Which this scale's pretty cool. The wireless module right here, which is really nice. And then it's also got a little, little kickstand on it too. Set that right on top or wherever you want. Really nice. The power button on the scale will sync up. So it's charged reading 1.2 ounces. So I'm going to hit the clear button. So the button's right here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open these valves so that now it's feeding refrigerant through. <laughs> kind of did the purge for me. Kind of purge through. And now I'm gonna see if it purges through here. I don't think it will yet. Yeah, it's not gonna purge through yet. We're on there but on our main disconnect switch. The cord is in nice and snug, which is always important. Now you see this nice big display. All right, so we're gonna start it recover. You can see now we have outlet pressure. We're gonna go ahead and purge this. There, and now we're gonna open the tank. All right, so we've got it zeroed out. We've got it open on recover. Tank is on the scale. We are connected, which you can see here. That shows but both the controller and the scale are connected. So now we're ready to start her up, which is really easy. Just hit start. And you kind of throttle it in via liquid at first. See, showing you the inlet pressure here, and then the outlet pressure. It doesn't sound like it's bogging, so I'm just gonna leave it full open. It's pulling out of both sides, no cores. We've currently got one. Rather than let it keep running, you can see we're in the negative, so I'm gonna go ahead and just kill it. 
so we're good to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shut off my core tools just to make sure that nothing sucks into the unit at all. And I'm gonna check my measure quick app what the pressure's showing at the system just to confirm. So it's about perfect. I'm showing on the system that we just have a tiny bit of pressure on the port. So we're good to go ahead and do whatever we need to do on the system. In this case, I'm replacing the expansion valve. And like I said, you know, it's not usually the expansion valve. So don't go replacing expansion valves all the time. But on this system, we do have an expansion valve problem, sort of a known issue. If you look back on some of our old videos, but you can see what we got out of the system is three pounds, eight ounces, which is less than the desired fa factory charge, which is over five pounds. So that's something else we need to look at as well is do we have leaks in the system? So once we do the nitrogen pressure test, we'll check for that. But today, what I mostly wanted to show you was NRDD. We did the entire recovery in under five minutes. Makes it really easy, nice and light. Great heavy duty handle on it. It has a double row coil, which makes vapor recovery a breeze is everything you could want really in a recovery machine as well as a dc motor which responds well to uh, low voltage voltage drop those sorts of things in comparison to a typical psc motor so there's a lot to like about the navac nrdd recovery machine thanks for watching